So I've been watching The X-Files again, and this theme has been stuck in my head probably since I was a child. And because I play piano and I love to deconstruct music and figure out why it works the way it does, why it makes me feel the way I do, I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to dig into The X-Files theme and quite a few others that have uh, always haunted me or really moved me. And then I also took some requests. So let's get into it. So the X-Files theme has changed in its production a few different times, but the core melody and chords have stayed the same. So here's the original one. Iconic. I just watched a video of Mark Snow describing how he came up with this theme, and it turns out he wasn't having any success with his other ideas, and then he just like leaned on his piano, his keyboard, and it had a delay effect on it, which is like an echo. And he was like, oh, that's cool. What if I do two notes? And then what if I do three notes? Ooh, what if I... And there it was. <laughs> I am gonna be using a few music theory terms in this video, but uh, no worries if it goes over your head, it's really not that important. It's interesting to label things because we can kind of notice patterns between the scores. It's highly unlikely that the musicians who wrote this music were thinking about it like that. I don't even think about music when I'm writing it this way. This is a purely analytical standpoint, taking a step back and being like, what is going on? This is typically not a part of the actual creative process. And to piggyback off of that disclaimer, it does not require music theory to write film scores. This chord. This chord is a very minor sounding chord. There's all sorts of different ways you could notate it or describe it, but you've got a minor chord. And then on top of it, this note is just above the, the, the top end of the chord. So it's called a half step. And it's a very, it's a very magnetic sound. The This top note desperately wants to resolve its tension down to this note. So it's kind of like leaving you on a cliffhanger, essentially. It's kind of that like dot, 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 or like question mark sound, but also, this note being a minor note coming from the minor scale is everything. That is the note that makes this so creepy. That's the aliens right there. Like here's <laughs> X-Files in a major key. I think the slogan for that one is, I believe. Okay, so that's what makes that chord sound so cool. But there's obviously more to it, right? There's a melody and there's a little uh, accent here and here that everything's interacting with. This note, okay, and I love this note. This note is like, again, like reaching beyond. It's got that feeling. Stable, too far. And then there's this great melody. It's played by like a whistle synth, which is such a uncertain, mysterious sound, I think, in this context. Which just sounds very haunting and, and minor. And then there's a slight variation. I love that, it just goes a little higher. And then there's a much higher variation in general that goes. So it's just kind of almost like a reverse in a way of the one going up. But then this one gets its own variation, which I love, which is this note goes higher. I love those little touches. I think that really makes a huge difference. You also get this mysterious tritone right here. The devil's interval. But also the delay itself, I think, adds mystery because it confuses things. It's difficult to tell like what is a note and what is actually an echo and where does it start and where does it end? And without the echo, it sounds like this.
The next one I want to analyze, I actually did a piano cover of. This is the closing credits a theme song or the blood theme from Dexter. This part's the creepiest. always haunted me as well. <laughs> it's just very creepy. And there's one note in particular that I think makes it especially creepy. Before that note, things just feel very dark, very ominous, and kind of s serious. And that's also owed to the minor key. There's a little variation he keeps doing. So this implies a minor chord but then he changes that note to that, which is in between. Do you feel that tension? So that I think adds something, but then all the chords go down to this, this chord, and that's the flat six chord. And yes, it is related to the flat six note I was talking about before. If you're interested in the sound of this chord, then I have two whole videos about it used in like rock and alternative music. This chord has so much drama to it. It is a major chord, which has a very warm and confident sound, but the note it starts on is a minor scale note. So there's sort of this like, internal conflict, I think. And that's what makes it sound dramatic. And this is used all over the place in film scores. So you have this. That sound. So that's kind of the basis of this theme. That's like the harmony foundation of the melody that's about to come. And the melody I think is played by probably a violin. And then I think like maybe a flute. It sounds like there's two tones, two different timbres, I mean, that are kind of synced up uh, and creating this like new sound. Now, wind players and string players can bend their pitch. So I think that there is a specific direction being given to them to kind of slide into their notes. Ah, ah. So that adds to the creepiness right there because it sounds kind of voice-like. This just beautiful minor descending uh, theme. It keeps descending. That note. Now this note has a name too. You can call it the tritone in the key you're in or the flat five. And this note is not in the minor scale. This is sort of a, a foreign sound. If I force the melody to just go back to being normal minor, here's what it would sound like. Now that might sound really weird to you, and it sounds weird to me too, because I'm so used to hearing it the other way, but that would be a lot more what we would expect. So this is, uh, this, this note comes in and it's just like, ooh, something's not quite right here. It's almost like this melody is like Dexter, right? Like it seems like normal and then mm, the same melody repeats, that same thing is restated. Then the variation comes. Now this, just by itself, actually sounds like really, really pretty. <laughs> this has a, a certain film scorey sound that we'll talk about in a second. But it's kind of how it comes after the minor sound. I love this note at the end because I think it's a little bit unexpected. I kind of assumed they would just go. This is Daniel Licht, by the way. I thought Daniel would just leave us here because he keeps leaving us there down here. But at the very last minute, he overshoots and lands us on this note, 
which is the minor third of the key that this theme is in. So that just like accentuates the minorness of it. See? And then the ending, we have a... Get that off note again, then... And that's so pretty, by the way. That's a beautiful chord. And then... There's that tritone again. And then it ends on the key. That's called the tonic. It's very nice and wrapped up and very somber sounding. The next one I want to look at is from the movie K-Pax. And this score was by Edward Shearmer. And I don't know much about him, but this score influenced me so much. He actually combined you know, more traditional sounding orchestral, you know, strings and, and woodwinds and stuff uh, that you hear in film scores. But then he also brought in all these electronic components. There's like kind of dance grooves and synthesizers and sequencers. And even he sampled like a, a vibraphone, I think, and kind of brought that in to the electronic world he was creating. So it was just a really cool fusion of sounds. And the one theme that I wanted to look at today is called Grand Central Station. This is when Prote first arrives from K-Pax to Earth and is standing in Grand Central Station and the light is filtering through and he's just kind of taking it in. Love that note. Now, before we get to the main theme there with the piano, this setup is in the Lydian mode, okay? Lydian is a scale, basically, and it's used a lot in film scores, I, I suspect, because it has this very curious, playful, and open-minded sound. It's based on the major scale, at least that's how I think about it, but one of the notes has been made even higher. If we were just in B major, But the fourth note, I'm gonna raise up a little bit higher. This one. So that sounds really dreamy to me, a bit lost. And if you recognize that sound, you might. That's also the tritone. So. I think it doesn't usually sound um, like a scary kind of lost because it has the major scale as its sort of foundational sound, which doesn't sound scary to me. And since it's higher, I think it just, it, it breeds this feeling of something going up. So I, I really love that sound. And then this really pretty like harpsichord-like sound comes in. You'll notice there's this repeated note over and over again, right? And it's just alternating between these other notes. One of those notes is that note that we had to raise up. So this has a very Lydian and dreamy sound in it. Change. Then 
think my favorite thing about that is the, this part at the end. This is really, really beautiful. Very innocent sounding, but then there's something about the tension in that. And then this, this beautiful pattern is just repeated. Look at that. So it starts on the B major. Then it goes to a G sharp minor. Now these chords have a relationship. You might be able to see. These two notes are in this chord too. It's just that they're on the top of the chord. Melodies that sound good over this chord are probably gonna sound good over this chord. And they do. So listen, we have. See, that's the same exact thing as before. Just an octave lower, but now it's played over this chord. So it has a different meaning. Then that chord kind of resolves, so to speak. It has a little bit of a question it's posing, and then the answer is this chord. Okay. It's a D sharp minor chord. How tender does that sound? And then, same as before, but now it's over a different chord. This is called reharmonization. We change the context for the melody. So it just means something different now because of how these notes now relate to these notes as opposed to those notes. Over that minor chord, it sounds so much more um, poignant. And then, so instead of going, they change the pattern for this next chord, but it's still very recognizable as the same theme. Instead of, and then, now that chord has always stunned me. It just, oh, it, it opens up into something I wasn't expecting, which is something that I think film scores do so well, that regular songs, like pop songs, you know, rock songs, don't always do. They just kind of follow this thread, this journey, and you kind of move away from where you started and you kind of get lost in it. And I love that about film scores. If I do try to kind of think of this from a perspective of like a traditional chord progression I might hear in a pop song or a rock song, I would think of this as being in D sharp minor. Works really well. If that were the case, then this chord would be what's called the dominant chord. And this is the sound of harmonic minor. And I'm sure that some of the, the pieces, the, the themes we're gonna look at in the rest of the video have this scale. This scale is used so much in film scores and also in tons of music. It's a way of sort of bringing in a very bold chord into the minor scale to create a very satisfying type of resolution. That sound. Now onto some of your requests. So these are TV shows and movies that I may not have seen and themes I may not have heard. Six Feet Under was scored by Richard Marvin. I think I have seen a few episodes of this. Does that sound familiar? That's the same kind of chord that we were hearing in the k pax song. But just in a different key. So this also sounds like Lydian. It's that same feeling, that curious, lost, exploratory feeling. Playful too. There's also some notes in there that I would consider chromatic. So they're like outside of the key and they're just kind of like right next to other notes. It just creates a little disorientation. And this one also has another note in it that doesn't belong to regular old Lydian. There's a kind of offshoot scale of Lydian called Lydian dominant, 
which is what the Simpsons theme song is written in. And that has one note that's been changed, and that note is this. Regular Lydian sounds like this. And Lydian dominant sounds like this. Did I just mess up my lipstick? No, I'm okay. Okay, now the Lydian sound is gone. But it's still very playful just because of the instrumentation and everything. So now it's more like uh, a scale called Mixolydian. It's similar to the major scale, but there's again this kind of lowered edgy note here. If it were major, it would go. See that repeated pattern. Another kind of repeated pattern. It's kind of fun. That bass line has a kind of a darker sound to it. Really cool instrumentation uh, in this score, but that's not what I'm going over in this video. The next one is called Severance, and I haven't seen this. Theodore Shapiro. Ooh. Oh, I love this. It sounds very unsettling to me. So, there's something about it that feels kind of like it's supposed to lull me, but then the harmony used is very, uh, very creepy. Starts off with just a minor chord. Mm -hmm. and this next one. Da, da. I think it's this. Let me just confirm. Not quite. All I can tell you is that does not fit into this key. And then that chord though feels like everything's okay. And then that second one is also kind of weird. It's almost like an alternating of like normal, not okay, everything's okay. And then this chord comes, it's like not okay again. So that's very haunting as well, this. It's this note. This note is not expected. So these, this pattern. So the notes that are changing at the bottom fit into the chords.
Next is uh, The Ring, the main theme from The Ring, and the music is Hans Zimmer. So this is, once again, like a very pretty minor chord progression with arpeggios with some rogue notes thrown in to make things feel creepy and make things feel like something's wrong. It doesn't take much to make something sound unsettling if you just go outside of the box, the box being the sounds that Westerners are used to. there's some weird notes in here. This is sort of hinting at this harmonic minor sound that I was talking about before, this sound of, um, but a bastardization of it, so. That's so uncomfortable. called a augmented seventh chord, or otherwise known as the soap opera chord. <laughs> okay, so one thing to pay attention to if you write music is variation. Second time it starts the same. This time it went up instead of Whoa, I was not expecting that note at all. Hey, there's another track, though. There's another note, so. It's another tritone. all the way up. What is that scale? Now this one got requested by a lot of my subscribers because I analyze a lot of Nine Inch Nails music on this channel. So this is the In Motion theme from the Social Network soundtrack. So this is Trent, uh, I was about to say Trenticus, Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross. So this is gonna sound, I think, very different from anything we've listened to so far. Indeed. There is this synth that they're using in the bass that has an overtone that sounds like a major third over it. So just listen to what that sounds like. So I, mm -hmm. also D, okay, cool. All these have been in D, that's very nice. So it sounds like this. tones in, sound, in, in any kind of sound, instrument or a synthesized sound, they can confuse things a bit. There's always something called the fundamental frequency of tonal sound, meaning it sounds like a note versus just like What I just did has like so many overtones that it doesn't even sound musical. So this overtone on top of the bottom note, is so loud that you can actually hear it almost like a separate note. This overtone is mathematically locked in relationship to the bottom note. Whether or not that overtone is in the scale, and it's not always in the scale. You can hear it really clearly in Nine Inch Nails song, Closer, right? I think there's a melody that's about to come in and we can figure that out. <laughs> Be hi hats like techno. Very driving. 
layering. You hear progressive layering. He's so good. All right. Do you recognize this? Actually, when I'm talking about Nine Inch Nails music, I call it a Trent tone because this is an interval that you very commonly find in his music. The interval that when I was growing up listening to Nine Inch Nails made me so uncomfortable. Now this also has that Lydian sound that we're talking about in some of the other scores we're listening to. <laughs> Question. And then this, this should feel like an answer, but it doesn't. <laughs> Because it, I think it's because of what's going on underneath it is moving so much, so. As always with Trent's music, there's a lot of dissonance. A lot of the relationships between the notes end up being um, very tense and kind of at odds with each other. And that's part of his sound, in my opinion. Okay, next is the Westworld intro opening sequence. This is from the TV show. I haven't seen Westworld. It is composed by Ramin. Tim playing the piano. That just freaked me out. I'm really a skeleton playing the piano too, so. So we have an A minor and then an F major. And this is the flat six chord I have may have mentioned. That was a joke, by the way. I've mentioned it every day of my life since I learned what that chord is called. It was always the chord that made me feel things. I was like, whatever that is, I have to, I just want to live in that chord. Isn't that beautiful tension? magical powers is that relationship. I love that. I love it when a note gets held over from the previous chord. That was very uh, stable sounding and very resolved. Like, like that's very confident and not dissonant. But then that is very tense. So pretty. Love those reverse sounds. Okay, now they changed the bass. So instead of, um, now it's. And that sounds different and it's leading our ear to believe that there's going to be something new happening now, right? Like we're not just gonna, it's not business as usual. And I think this is when the chords really change, so. Yeah, that was very unexpected. That's unexpected because it doesn't belong in the A minor key. Just so you know, it's fine that these things don't belong. The only reason I keep saying that is that these changes are what catch our ear. So this note is just above A. And so it's very heavy and it deeply wants to resolve to A. Um, very minor sounding motifs establishing uh, this feeling of excitement and seriousness, darkness, intrigue. Oh my God, the skeleton is playing the correct notes. Okay, we're gonna learn from the skeleton. Oh. 
God. What is what fingers is it using? Bones. Which bones? They had to figure that out. They had to program a fingering for the skeleton. See a lot of uh, pattern repetition there, right? That I would call like a harmonic minor figure. Ooh. The skeleton is back. The piano is playing itself. Oh, okay, we have to talk about that one part and then I think I'm gonna call it a night. Listen to what just happened. This is called a deceptive cadence. I love this shit. <laughs> Melody just matches up with that chord really nicely and then... <laughs> this chord. This chord sounds to my ears like a dominant chord. I talked about this a little bit before. It tends to resolve to a specific chord. And that one would be A minor. Like that, okay? Sorry. But listen to what it resolves to instead. I think this is where the deception happens. There! That's what our ears think is going to happen. It's another one of those like Lydian chords. What do they call that? Sharp 11? Instead of... It's... Oh, that was so exciting. I love that. Okay, well, this was really fun. I have quite a few more uh, requests to go through. So if this video does well, if you like it, um, let me know and I will maybe do some more. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. That really helps me out. I have the most incredible patrons who have been there for me this whole time and are supporting me. And I just wanna say thank you, thank you so, so much. Their names are scrolling on the screen right now. And this is, this is my community, so. Mwah. All right. <laughs> Bye. See you next time. I thought this would be the perfect. Oh, fucking. I think I've had that that flub before. Perfect. What am I going to eat? Do I even have to use music theory? Can I just can I just be like this chord's beautiful. This note's beautiful. Uh. Da 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 da. da.